is the second session on the sacrament of baptism. What do we believe about the sacrament of baptism? And like all the other sacraments, we can explore what we believe by looking at how do we celebrate the sacrament of baptism. I said in the first session that we are baptized into Jesus Christ. So the very first gesture that takes place in the baptismal ceremony is the signing of the cross on the forehead of the person who is being baptized. And we use the expression, I claim you for Christ. So the priest or the deacon who is presiding at the baptismal celebration says, I claim you for Christ by the sign of the cross. Imagine being claimed by Christ. Christ claims us as a child of God. It's a beautiful gesture, and it's done in silence, and it's very moving, and it sets the tone for the rest of the celebration. It is the very foundation of the sacrament and what it means to be one with Christ. And like all the sacraments, Baptism is celebrated within a community of believers. We say the local church or the parish community, a family that includes parents, godparents, other members of our immediate family, perhaps some friends. But it's also another family. It's that family of faith, that household of the Father. And all of these people, because they are believers, they all welcome us into this family. And we are asked, or our parents are asked, well, what name do you give this child? Or if it's an adult, what is your name? Because we want to know who this person is for the rest of our life, the rest of their life, as one of us, as one of God's family. We believe then that once we are signed and once, once we are named, our journey begins. A journey of faith, a journey of hope, a journey of love, a journey that we do not take up on our own. So baptism, we believe, is that first step. One of the other gestures as we go through the ceremony. One of the other gestures in the sacrament of baptism as we celebrate it is anointing. We are anointed with blessed oil. Actually, we're anointed twice. And that gesture is accompanied by this phrase, as Christ was anointed. So we believe we are anointed as Christ was. Christ means the anointed one, the anointed Messiah of God. We are anointed then, as Christ was, to be as Christ was, or as Christ is. I mean, that's kind of awesome. It, maybe it's just a little bit frightening to be like Christ. We truly believe that we not only share certain traits or characteristics of our family, our biological DNA, but we share a spiritual DNA with Jesus Christ. That's amazing. A spiritual DNA. And our whole life is a journey of unfolding those Christ-like virtues or attributes. No wonder we need each other and the grace of God to do this. And one of the aspects also of that grace of God is our belief that baptism frees us from original sin. We are no longer destined to live apart from God's love. Oh, of course, uh, you and I know we make choices in life that aren't always in keeping with that loving communion, but the forgiveness of God is always there for us. And I'm going to talk more about that when we do the reflection on the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Finally, we can't forget, of course, the gesture with water, the immersion in the water, 
or the pouring of the water over the one who is to be baptized. That is the, uh, the central act of the rite of baptism. And we believe that just as water is a sign and source of life, so to be immersed in it is to be immersed in the very life of Christ, to share with him, who is the source of all life, the love of God. And that's why I, I recommend that a generous amount of water should always be used. The generous outpouring of God's love and God's life is never lacking. God is not stingy. At the end of the ceremony, we are handed a lighted candle, lit from the Paschal candle, the great Paschal candle, the symbol of Christ in the light of the world. And we believe that we can be that light. And so to you, I say, go, be a light in the world.